Oh, goodness. Hey, Andrew. How are you? Uh, great, Brian. Uh, great. It, for some reason, some Twitch shenanigans happened. Uh, I don't... I don't... Twitch! I don't, I don't understand them, and I will not respond to them. But it does mean that I have to set up a bunch of things again and also test. But we're also live. We're alive. Well, oh, this does not be yeah. my professional standards. Um, I'm gonna have <laughs> this just did a breaking report. There are professional standards with Andrew Bain. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh... Silly, silly, silly. Let me move these things around. We'll go from stage wide to chat. There you are. Okay, and then we at least have one shot with the two of us. And then I'll... Uh... Just the two of us. Oh, no. Oh, no. And two-thirds of us. <laughs> we cannot make it. Uh, Woohoo. Okay, all right. There's a good enough two shot of the two of us. Justin is currently in the corner. I don't like it. Uh, seems like he should not be in a corner. Oh, why? Uh, because I can I'll... operate at anywhere, man. I got range. All right. Put me in a corner. Put me in the center. Put me on a Speaking caddy corner. of range, you look like the guy that's going to sell me ammo at the gun range. Uh, uh, so I'm doing a, uh, a a UK election special, and I'm recording all the interviews on Fridays. So I think I'm going to show up for this in this outfit for the next four Fridays. Oh, hells yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, what's that funny, will only what's funny, it won't, it, it won't even more. appear to be a joke to them. <laughs> They're all like, yeah. I got... No, I was they're, they're, they're dinner, the ones having their election yeah. on July 4th. Like, what, what what'd you expect? I was at a dinner the other day, and people go, well, the way the Americans pronounce this, I said, can we, can we just use the term when a bunch of French, German, Irish, and some Scandinavian people get together and figure out how to pronounce things? That's what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh... I think we're close enough to good. Uh, mm, all right. You ready to be on the record? Uh, I just don't have a three shot. Whatever. I'll figure it out while we're doing the show. <laughs> you sure you don't want to take a, take a second or take a beat? Well, I mean. We, we're uh, good. No, okay. Yeah. I'm always feeling the awkwards when I make you guys just wait on my account. No, that's fine. Man. Not. I'm watching you, Brian. I know. Uh, wait a minute. Are those oh, special glasses of some variety? Uh, when I get too tiny a print, that is the special glass. <laughs> uh, I can read regular print, but when I get a book with like really small print, that's like... This is fine. But when any, I get like any, the, anything the smaller, the super starts tiny. To... Yeah, like the ingredients labels and stuff like that. Oh my you know? god, yeah. Like, have you, have you, <laughs> is that, you know, when you're, you're getting old is, is when you, uh, find yourself pulling out the phone and using it as a magnifying glass. <laughs> well, restaurants, <laughs> restaurants will do that. Yeah. Meanwhile, my wife, you know, she's like, Hey, what do you think of this? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Like, I, don't know. I, I literally don't know. <laughs> Crop Y2. There we go. And then I'll just kind of pan you down. There we go. And guess what? Uh, we now have a new official Weird Things layout. A boom. A bloody boom. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Now I get to save yet another update. Uh, save as. Chat room. Justin does not look like Inspector Clouseau, although he does look like he'd be taking your ticket in a French train station. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Miss you. Miss you. Miss you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's no good. All right. Uh, uh, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll start it in three, two, one, and... Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Monsieur Justin Robert Young. Oui, oui. And Mr. <laughs> Brian Brushwood. Hello, you beautiful Americans. Anyone here love America say yeah? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got left uh, hanging on that one. <laughs> you did. Yeah, true. Yeah. No, true facts. That was, that was the bit. Okay. So, uh, any of you watched the movie Late Night with the Devil? No, no. this was the uh, the horror movie that that purports to be like a a, a late night program in in the like seventies or eighties. Seventies, yeah. Seventies, yeah. But uh, uh, it looked really cool, and then it wound up getting a lot of attention because it used like three frames of AI art or something. Oh, I don't remember that, but. Uh, yeah, there's some things probably in there, but uh, in, oh, I'm sorry. Can we can we just move past everybody? You know, I, I used a auto text complete, you know, and a grammar checker, and this and that. Oh, I, like, I was I, already. I you already had me when you said, "Can we just move past everybody?" Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I think we already I know. know. I, well, I well, just, to, uh, to be, to be fair, this was they're, yeah. This this was a few months ago. It was right right when the movie was was released, but uh, it was it was close to the strike, and it, it had its own little weird weird moment. But I agree with you. I think it's a dumb controversy. Yeah. Um. So dumb. I'm sorry, artists out there. Uh. Listen. Um. Let's move on. Let's get to the point where we all know how to use these things and build bigger, better. Uh, artists, things. bless your hearts. Uh. You're why we make AI for you. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you were, if you weren't artists, you'd probably be with us working on AI. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a. I write. You know, I I support myself as an as a creative, and very much can see that time frame where you know AI will be writing better than I can. I accept that. I, 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 the last thing in I world I want to do is to tell other people, no, you can't read AI written books because I need your money. This goes to me. And like <laughs> that's just selfish. Uh, so, and you know, it's like indie film trying to make the best of what they can do, and that's that thing. And you know, I think people were well, really bad at economics. Well, well, so, so, so uh, uh, t uh, tell me about this movie. What, what's, what's the deal with the devil? So, so it's uh, directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns, who've done some other uh, horror stuff. And it stars David Dasmalchian, whose name I always get wrong, but he's a great actor. And the premise is, and again, they don't expect you to believe this, because like literally it stars you know, a guy from Dune. So <laughs> it's not like, oh, is this found footage? Like, yeah, he did talk show in the 70s, everything happened. No, uh, and I like that. I like the premise that they're not really trying. It's not one of those like Apollo... 19 or whatever oh, uh, those uh, dumb uh, Apollo uh, oh I for, yeah I forget which one but there was one that purported to be found footage on the moon uh which yeah and it's like where do you like Blair Witch I, I feel like that was the Blair one Witch. chance like that was a good gotcha and even Blair Witch couldn't resist uh screwing it up uh but but that was a moment in time that came and went to to pull one and over I, on everyone. and I think they hurt themselves to be honest with you, Blair Witch, with that because I I did go to theater. I walked out. I remember some guy going, oh, "That's all. That's all real footage. It's all true." And I'm like, "You're an idiot." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like three people got murdered, and we're just gonna go rush it to the AMC theater and sell you popcorn. Uh, the 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 better version of the Blair Witch story was actually uh, the viral marketing campaign that they did beforehand, where they had like the cinematographer or the editor just sort of like you could hear room tone room very clearly on a webcam just speaking plainly about like yeah no we just found all this footage it's pretty messed up and then they would cut to it and i'm like now you're doing it now you're actually fooling me and this is hypnotic and incredible in the movie theater it's like uh, i don't know seems like you got really good coverage over all those locations yeah i i really enjoyed this and the there's a couple characters and I did not know what was and I it, it 
there's sometimes little tells in the beginning. You think, oh wow, okay, but the, they have a character. Uh, they have like they have uh, the woman who's you know the parapsychologist studying the young girl who may or may not be possessed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what is what is what is the premise? The overall the overall premise. Uh, there's guests on a talk show. You have a okay. you have a woman who's a parapsychologist who has a taking care of a young girl who may or may not be possessed. You have a psychic medium who shows up. It's this Halloween naive talk show event, which they're trying to get their best ratings, and they brought in the stack of guests, and there's the host. And he's got his own little history, which we get before. It's a lot of like pseudo doc, like previously this happened and dot, dot, dot. And uh, Michael Ironside does the voiceover, which is awesome. But uh, the other character, which I didn't know from the trailer, is a skeptic and former magician. Really? Oh, I, I heard about this, uh, I, but, but only vague details. Keep going. Um. He he's he has a check that he's willing to offer. He <laughs> comes from this, you know, this committee of scientific investigators of the paranormal. Um, and uh, Randy, you know, James Randy, who were, were you know, we, you know uh, clearly he's a James, he's a version of James Randy, obviously. And and we all knew Randy. I you know, I worked for Randy for years. You know, Randy was a mentor to me. I would say Randy was very sensitive sometimes when he felt like uh if he was being unfairly portrayed. So I don't know how happy he would be with this, <laughs> uh, but they did their homework. I mean, they did their homework and uh, it was, uh, uh, it was weird because you, you're watching a character and, and I don't, I think may probably mention this like twice, but like at the very first amazing meeting, you know, Randy had announced that I was going to be his successor and he wanted very much for me to, to follow in his footsteps, but I, I wanted to go, different you know, TV route for critical thinking education stuff and got an AI, et cetera. Um, and so it is this weird kind of thing where you're like, you're part of a part of a small part of this legacy watching that on screen. Um, and so uh, a version of that depicted was obvious. It, it turns out that it goes down a different path. So um, after you see it, there's a very funny moment in there, which reminds me of something Randy had said, which I don't think anybody would have known, but anyhow, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, you know, but it was a little bit. Well, uh, like they had done weird. their homework. Did did you feel like there's a difference between actually, I guess uh, showing respect would be to do your homework at all and to actually, you know, uh, get a bunch of details exactly right to say, no, 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 no. we're definitely doing James Randi on this. Uh, now, whether or not the uh, writers are being respectful. Uh, is well, I mean, it's a movie where the, the devil comes alive in a, in a, in a, in a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> and, and late night, you know? Yeah. So uh, I, I can't yeah. imagine, I can't imagine that the, that the skeptic magician is going to do anything, but be horrifyingly murdered by the devil. <laughs> so, I'm not going to tell you what happens, oh, or what, what, okay. but uh, I could get into spoilers there because of a moment that I thought made me laugh out loud. But uh, I enjoyed it, and I do think, like, yeah, they're going to take somebody you like and make them kind of a cliche. And, and I would say that you know my 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 one big note, you know, other than you know the paranormal being real in it, which of course, how do you 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 make the it's a horror real movie? movie? Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not I'm like, what are you ah, why are there ghosts in my ghost movie? <laughs> you want the real no. horror? The real horror is you're going to die alone. Ah. I I was watching this really good working man business drama, and then they added ghosts to it. And it became <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yeah. It's about how suspicion. the EPA are the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, no, I enjoy that thread, and I think that like you, you take a character and you take an archetype, and then you go do it, and, and it's I would say my my crit would be uh, uh, Randy was way more charming than this guy was portrayed. Like Randy, Randy was could very easily win over an audience and stuff like this, where he this guy plays like you know the boo, it's a skeptic, everybody boo, you know. That, um, that but, is uh, interesting that his reputation. Uh, to the outside observer. Uh, and I don't know if it's because he, uh, he did seem to enjoy, and I say this with all affection, uh, scowling in all of his headshots. Um, I, I wonder if it's as simple as that, that, that people would pick up and decide that must be the, the way to represent <laughs> I, the character. I, I had a copy of his book where he had that expression. I'm in high school and this girl, this, this fundamentalist girl, very sweet, 
picks up the book, looks at the photo, and goes, that's satanic, and hands it back to me. <laughs> 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 like, that's that's my friend Randy. Like, I don't think he's, you know, it, it was just... <laughs> that, that's satanic. Well, that All is, right. you know, it, it's when when we were doing the research for season three of World's Greatest Con that obviously dealt with Randy and Project Alpha, it was interesting to see the the... You know, I read a lot of uh, uh, counter commentary and and believers that were uh, critical of Randy and Project Alpha, and and universally the idea was that he was like an incurious stick in the mud, that that he was yeah. was uh, 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 not open minded enough to believe where the science could be, and a bit of a nudge, but that is very much contrary to who he was, which is like he would walk into any room and. Like, oh, just get just on, charm on, on everybody. Side. Yeah. yeah, he was a very an extraordinarily charming guy. Yeah, so I mean, again, it's not like a a knock on the movie. See, that was the difference. Is 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 it was just, and I think that the way the yeah. guy who played the character, like, the character's name is Carmichael Haig, did a really good. But it's like it was very very. I mean, this guy had a background as a hypnotist, and that, which is important. But like, it was you know, again, I enjoyed it, and you know, it just it is sort of weird to see this. My my friend Paul Heinick whose father is J. Allen Hynek of Project Blue Book. They did the whole TV series Project Blue Book with about his dad and his mom and gave her like a lesbian affair and oh, all Jesus. these other stuff, you know, and, uh, which uh, is, you know, it's that, like, that it's, uh, I, I would imagine the meeting goes like, hey, what's all this stuff? And they're all like, look, granny photos ain't going to do a kid. <laughs> we need yeah. some kind of human we drama. See this up. <laughs> yeah, well, Paul and his brother are both, you know, his brother won an Academy Award for special effects for what dreams may come. And Paul's been, you know, Paul ran the studio where they produced, you know, Avatar and stuff. So like, or the, the production cup, you know, facility or really that. So Paul gets it. They get it. They're, they're like, yeah, we, we, can, we know the biz, you know, so they're like circus folks. So it's like, yeah, yeah, sure. But I, Maybe mom could do that. You know, yeah. who knows? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I certainly didn't see her not doing that. Yeah. Not uh, doing it. <laughs> it's like, like so, uh, so, yeah. so, so, so you're saying we got a season one order? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, it all connects to me. We will, I'll mm. get, we'll get Paul on here. Paul's great. Uh, Paul, Paul's really a fun, fun guy to talk to and whatnot. Um, so uh, anyhow, uh, later I enjoyed it, and I and I think that like it is, it is, it, you know, kind of brought up like a thing. I was thinking about this was, um, I decided that I was going to kind of pivot more towards critical thinking than kind of the UFO stuff and all that. Actually, in the late '90s, because my argument was, when I was a kid, if I wanted to find out about UFOs or stuff, I'd go to the library and there'd be a bunch of dumb books. That was it. That was my only way to know. If I came upon a book by Carl Sagan also, or right uh, here, uh, Nichols, I loved all of those dumb books. The ones that were just clearly oh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, just three chapters on the brown lady, uh, just a oh, picture yeah. of a staircase with a mishmash on it or something. I I, I ran into some people. I go, where are you from? They go, McMinnville, Oregon. I'm like, oh, ooh, if you're a UFO person, you know the McMinnville UFO photo. You know, they're like, what? I'm like, they go, I show the photo. Oh, you took this? I'm like, I'm like, no, it's like a famous UFO photo. I mean, it's clearly like a hubcap and a hoax, but still, <laughs> it's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, and I love that. But then you would, if you'd be thinking like, oh, maybe I guess there's something here because off, also what happened, a thing that we forgot about when like the great journalistic standards if you had a faith, if you had a uh, person claiming to talk to the dead, one of those fakers, a guy like James von Prague or John Edwards, uh, John Edward, uh, not Edwards, Edward, uh, they would have the religion editor cover them. And so not the science reporter, which I think that would be a really important science story. We can talk to the dead, but the newspapers knew it was bullshit. So they would just like have the religious editor talk to it because they're not going to say that, which I think is just journalistic malpractice, which is why a lot of people felt uh, these stupid I, things. I mean, to and, be honest, would it belong more in the science section or in the religion section, given that, that uh, not not to discredit anyone's religion, but but seems like like uh, <laughs> it, it seems like religion section would be the bucket where stuff like this should no go. well Brian if guy comes to town and makes claim that he is doing blank guy comes to town claiming that he can talk to the dead I think that should be you you're coming from the point of view where we know it's BS but if you didn't think it was BS if you thought oh maybe this is true that would be a big scientific story yeah no that, but that, we know it's BS that's fair enough yeah 
and so that was my that was my issue with newspapers going back to the 90s when I first started studying this was like you're you're have like on one hand people like all oh, these dumb people falling for this stuff okay what are the journalists doing well the editors are just shoving it over to the religion section because they don't want to have to deal like well yeah we all know it's okay no like people who trust you would are thinking that if this was fake you would say so but because you're not saying it's fake dot 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 you know so yeah that's my you know anyhow but anyhow um i i reached this point i said you know by the time you know, you had Wikipedia. By the time you started having, you know, online, you could Google search and find out skeptical stuff. And, you know, I worked, you know, I spent years helping, you know, work on the SEO and stuff for the the James Randi Encyclopedia and trying to figure out how we promote this sort of stuff. And once you got to the point within three search results, you could find a debunking. I'm like, we're done. Like, like my job is not to argue with somebody who chooses to believe a thing. Yeah, my my job is to just provide a counterpoint, a different point of view on that. I, 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 and I, if somebody wants that, it can read it. I, I, I wonder if you're single handedly responsible for uh, what became the heuristic that I would always rely on, which is whatever the thing was, I would type thing, thing and the word skeptic. And that would always lead me to a science based evaluation of it or not. Uh, um, no, I would I would say probably the biggest impact would have been like Skeptics Guide or the Skeptics Encyclopedia or some of those other things. There was there was a the, really the, good the Skeptics community. Dictionary. Uh, skeptic. Yeah, 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 that stuff. Yeah, I would say that was that. Then I helped put Randy's stuff online too, but maybe a small part. But I think that was led by that. Uh, you know, and then there was Snopes when it was good. You know, before Snopes got political and and Snopes got bored. You know, felt like. <laughs> Well, yeah, like they felt they had to have an opinion on things that you really, you know, they yeah. Start he's like, just tell me if the that. bear was really on the trampoline. <laughs> can we, can we, yeah, can we stick yeah. to that? Yeah, and and not well, what they really meant, like who cares? But anyhow, Cause it, yeah, because because so because like it all became like the five Pinocchios thing in the Washington Post at a certain point. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, that that is amazing how. Oh, uh, yeah, fact checker became the most politicized position in media. But anyhow, I felt like at that point, like for me, it was like, ah, time to move on because if somebody wants this information, it's there. You know, my, my friends who believe in this stuff are aware of the skeptical arguments were hard before you weren't, and you can just choose to ignore them. And, you know, I'm, I'm not out there to, you know, knock on doors and, you know, browbeat people into a particular point of view. So, uh, anyhow, um, that's the thing I think about where we are now watching this movie. I was like, yeah, like we are in a very different role of skepticism where I would say that the mainstream sort of thing, things, very, very paranormal things just will not last a few minutes on the internet. Like the very, very last, I mean, you'll get, we, we talk about, Oh, this video from here, but then it quickly get forgotten about whatever S specific things. The only thing that's had any sort of staying power would have been like, you know, the, uh, the imaging system flares and stuff that people thought were UFOs because that was a harder thing to understand. And so there's certainly a lot of people who think that there's a there there, but it just doesn't stay very long. Well, I, I, I well, it, it, it certainly doesn't get unchallenged. And, and there is obviously an audience that wants to gather around it. But I think that's cl closer to the idea of a self-selected group that just wants to find a thing that they like to talk about and less the general audience that might be uh, uh, swayed by it. That coupled with the fact that we don't really have the same kind of mainstream media outlets that would push people in, in the same kind of direction. Yeah, and, and even, you know, you see somebody who is generally somewhat credible, like Eric Weinstein, kind of go crazy over this sort of stuff. And, and, you know, using you know, why, why is it Elon Musk spending billions to investigate this new physics? It's like, or, you know, why we don't realize how thermal imagers work. Um, but it's like, even it's like, well, why aren't you taking it seriously? Like, are you raising a fund for this stuff? Like, like you get too excited, but do you really think there's a thing yeah. there? Like, do you really, you know, I, I, you know, I, the, the challenge I would give to flat earthers and the thing about flat earthers, I've said this before, is you have to understand that it is. It's not just that they think the world is flat. There is a entire ecology of conspiracy believed on there coming down to not wanting to believe kind of anybody or anything else that like that, you know? And so it's, it's in, I remember like, well, if I thought the earth was flat, 
I would literally be raising money to go charter a boat and go find it. <laughs> like, and, and, and there has here and there been the the one dude who spent his life savings to make a rocket to prove or whatever. Uh, but 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 in general, it seems like the whole flat Earth movement seems to be just basically punk rock epistemology where it's like, no, everything's a lie. How about that? Uh, well, I like but, that, Dad. But it's also, I've always said flat earth is the Voltron of conspiracy theories because it, it has to include several other conspiracy theories that ultimately flat earth, I think winds up being enduring in our, in our culture because it might be the ultimate they're lying to us, uh, yeah. conspiracy. And, and so now you have, boom, now you have a bunch of other things. Who are they? How are they lying? Why is it working? And I, you, 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 you combine all these other things, but, but you have to shop from those buckets to even get to the idea that there's a flat earth, that it's almost secondary. I, my, my hypothesis is that we are the most vulnerable to these types of theories when we are experiencing extreme modes of low agency, when we feel like we have very little self-control over life. And that's why you start to see these, and, and more also, by the way, uh, isolated. Because the conspiracies tend to be, because we, we create elaborate conspiracy theories about groups of people getting together to do evil things, but also like, these people are evil. How come they're all cooperating really well? You know, like, well, you know, and, the, and the, that's the a, Nazi party started with the, with the, you know, the Night of Long Knives and just you know, went throughout them just betraying each other. Well, uh, I guess that also would make sense where it's like you, uh, World War II is happening and then everybody comes home, the baby boomers are born. And then in the 1950s, um, you know, uh, kids grow up watching TV and it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if around the, the launch of Sputnik where all of a sudden the vague idea that it's like, Oh wait, how, how much are we in charge of the way we even see the world? You know, is there a, they who are programming all this, putting it on television, et cetera, et cetera. And then, uh, uh, you know, then there's a kind of a, a blowback against that in the oh, 1970s. Well, uh, 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 but huh? then by, by the 19, early 80s, you have another kind of flap where for the first time, a lot of women are entering the workplace and they have to give up agency over their children. And that's why daycares got roped in with, of all things, the idea of the satanic panic. Uh, and, and as a result, many people got falsely arrested uh, during that time. And then uh, 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 the, uh, nowadays, our lack of control, you know, one might say, uh, is, is our fear of being ostracized from social media campaigns. I I would put it back much much further than that. I can remember one famous conspiracy theorist from Austria who fell for the protocols of the elders of Zion and a lot of other stuff that tried to attribute that the world was being controlled by the Jews and that's how we got, you know, World War II. Um, you know, that was 1903 and prior to that is that I think that the average person just feeling like things were beyond their control. I think historically you always sort of try to come up with, you know, once upon a time be the gods or the demons these are the things like i have no agency here i am i am you know beholden to what goes on there so i think you can find just keep going back back in periods and stuff but i but i think that like on an individual level I, I point of saying is that like people who you know if you lose your job and you're in or your social situation social standing or something like that you start to have questions. Is it me or is there something I don't understand? Is there something conspiring against me? And that makes these things very, very attractive to this. And like, you know, World War One, Germany, poor, you know, Germany trying to rise up out of their circumstances, this, why can't we do this? What's going, why are things not working out economically? And like, well, was, Hitler's like, I have a theory on who is preventing this from working out economically. And, you know, that is attractive. It's always attractive to have somebody to blame. I think that that's, that's a, that's a really, really good point is identifying where people feel in control and when they don't feel in control and, and you know, then rationalizing it. It's like, well, I could, but you know, if, if it weren't for those meddling kids, well, but, and, and but fill in meddling kids with whatever, <laughs> uh, 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 
economic theory or ethnic group you it, you would like to blame if if, if you want to see a microcosm of that same sentiment uh, write down like you know live every single day take a look at podcast and youtube commenters where it's like they're uh, most of the comments uh, i'd say what 50% boil down to 50% of them are hooray for you i like your thing and the other 50 are i would have done it this way why didn't they show the doobie doos uh, some of that stuff uh, and and because quite simply when you're watching a youtube video you don't get to be in charge of making the youtube video but you get to feel like you do when you write a comment yeah Oh, another group also the Masons. Like that goes back yeah. hundreds of years of of, of blaming you know the Masons. Uh, so uh, was to, this week was a pretty big deal in the whole uh, lab leak versus zoonotic discussion. Which uh, you know people here may be sick of hearing me bring this up, but I do think it's the most important scientific conversation of the twenty first century. Uh, you don't have Name to have a sharp one opinion either way. One million people who are dead that would agree with you. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And and it's again, it's it's not a ah, oh, you have to believe this. It's just you know, my argument's like, you know, when when it's a bunch of PhDs arguing with other PhDs, because people it was very easy and the thing that I ran into a lot was people like, oh, it's it's a it's you know, it's one of those 9-11 conspiracy theories. I'm like, well, if you had generals arguing over this, you know, and, and you had there was a lot of debate over that. Then I'd say that's something different. Not a structural engineer that doesn't understand how melting points work. I'm saying when you have literal virologists and other experts and people like this, and then the longer this has gone on, the more bad it looks for kind of the people that are pushing the zoonotic explanation. And what I mean by that, there's been new document disclosures. They're founding people who work with Fauci. We're in saying, hey, let's use this so we can't have our our emails found be freedom of information they act. were they were they were in, 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 intentionally intention yeah intentionally misspelling words and uh, uh to to avoid foia searches which doesn't mean wow. you're guilty doesn't put you on the side of the angels though oh, and I mean, so yeah you know we we had the hearing and i think that i think that the problem with the hearing to the extent was you had a number of republicans out to you know, grind their axes about mask mandates and other stuff. There could be conversations about that. But as far as getting to the root causes, a lot of that got lost to the noise of what's going on. Uh, Elena Chan, who we've talked about before, she co-wrote the book Viral with Matt Ridley, which tries to explore the origins of COVID. She got a guest essay editorial in the New York Times this week and complete with infographics. Oh, yeah, Justin, it was really it was that? it was the full the full schmear when it comes to the New York Times laying out the red carpet for it, especially for somebody that doesn't write for them normally, it was a full motion graphics presentation of essentially how implausible the zoonotic uh, theory is as of our current data, uh, specifically with the idea being that the, the, the bat that we know this comes from are from very specific caves in the southwest of China, that are that very, very, very far away from Wuhan, and yet there was no spillover in any of the cities between the caves and Wuhan, as well as just looking at what in the past when we've seen zoonotic spillovers like SARS and MERS and stuff like that, uh, what has happened to prove that that was the fact? And and uh, there's there's a nice little motion graphic that shows. Uh, when these things were found, these checkpoints were found to prove a zoonotic thing, with then the revelation being that none of that has been found so far with uh, uh, COVID-19. And that doesn't mean that it will never be found. I think that the light is dimming on that, to be quite frank. But uh, uh, it means that we have not found it, and we found the others a lot sooner than we did here. Meanwhile... You've got a lot of evidence that points to the reality that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was working on novel coronaviruses. And I think uh, I really appreciated the New York Times uh, publishing this uh, uh, Alina Chan guest essay. And I would also say that if you are interested in this, you should probably even look further into some of the the Chinese military uh, uh, applications of 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 this, because I think that there's there's a lot. I mean, th there's there's a lot there to the point where personally it would take a lot for me to believe 
that this was a zoonotic transfer as as it yeah. stands now. Yeah, and the the kind of like the infographic kind of illustrates like the the closest relative they found, the species it has. And by the way, not one that would have been transferred directly to humans, but the reservoir for the original version of the species of the virus, these bat populations that were a thousand miles away. And they show all the other labs, all the other wet markets, all the other places in between there. And then there's Wuhan, where the outbreak happened, who were bringing those bats to the lab to do that and had been criticized because they were using a BLS2 safety environment, which COVID would spread through yeah. because it's airborne. And that's the thing. It's like, okay, so they were testing in an environment where it would have spread through. They were testing the same animals that have it. They had been part of a paper. They had a proposal a couple years before explaining they want to put in that specific furin cleavage site into the virus that then showed up there. It is... And and again, and, and the two things, like we've said this before, people go, oh, well, it's racist. OK, so blame it on a bunch of Chinese people in a wet market. It's not like that. That just making you no know, sense, because this one, at least part of the culpability here comes from the U.S. government because of how we were providing funding without making sure they had adequate oversight and they were following protocols because some people were more eager to. There was you know, the Eco Health Alliance, which is one of the, the bodies that helps distribute these grants, were more incentivized to just keep the money going than to shut the money down. And they have now they've been they've been blocked by the Biden administration now from participating in future you know, uh, funding, which right on time shows you. Yeah, right on time, which shows you that like the, the, the they're there, like there's so much more there there now than there was before. But even then, in the beginning, it was like, all right, it seems like a lab leak. Right. And then we had the there was the whole in. I see people who get this wrong all the time because they they listen to one thing that confirmed what made was, you know, it's scary to think this came from a lab. It's absolutely scary to think this came from a lab because that thing's like, well, how that just happened again and in and you could just make a thing. I think that's the other thing that people really don't want to address is that a handful of researchers were able to make a thing that killed millions of people. And, and that's, that is, I've seen a lot of scientists react to this in a way and not unscientifically because well, it, it's and, uncomfortable. And, but, uh, right? Emotionally, it, it's kind of like it's hard to believe uh, for those of us who lived through 9 11 that just nine crazy people did that with nothing but, you know, box cutters. 19, right? Uh, whatever. 19. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like, like, I feel guilty for not remembering, but then I'm like, why should I uh, put brain space to that? And then another part of my brain says, never forget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's roll. Well, there was the, 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 the joke, uh, in the movie with Ray Romano. Um, I'm, I'm always going to mispronounce his name. Um, was the big sick, uh, where Kumail um, Nanjiani, yeah. Kumail Nanjiani says to Ray Romano because he's you know he's like he's looking you know he finds out talking to the, the the daughter's you know boyfriend whatever, and Ray Romano goes, "Ah, oh, it's a question I, I I like to I just ask everybody is uh what did you think of 9-11? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, 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 and Kumail goes, "Oh, it's terrible, terrible. We lost." We lost 19 really brave guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and the a, awkwardness. He goes, oh, it's a joke. It's a horror. It was just that. It is a beautiful, awkward moment. It was just, just we lost, oh, ter- lost 19 brave guys. <laughs> just, wow. Uh, I regret to inform uh, you, Andrew, terrible. that you've lost your politically incorrect talk show. Unfortunately, <laughs> that has been stripped. Uh, so... Uh, you go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I mean, no, to 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 uh, uh, pivot back to <laughs> the the, um, the 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 information here, I think that it's it's very interesting that we we crossed a Rubicon. Uh, it is now no longer the most racist thing that you can say in the world to suggest that this is the case. Um, this has obviously been around for a while. It's also kind of a element of our modern media world where a th- this became a political issue the the idea of a lab leak versus a, zo- a zoonotic transfer became political it didn't which is odd because it didn't really have rigid political lines per se it uh, it, it it 
you know, the idea of a, a lab leak became on some level, I guess, more conservative coded than liberal coded. But it's it's like a uh, it's almost like the question is, what's that got to do with unions? <laughs> like, like, why, why, why would it be more uh, team red or the, team the, blue? The thing that has always been horrifying to me about it and the reason why I do think it is important, not only from the science perspective that you said, Andrew, is that there needs to be an element when we have gigantic world shaking events like this, there's got to be an element of truth and reconciliation about it. We have to understand what, what went on. And unfortunately we're in a strange geopolitical world where the government of China that I believe there's enough evidence to suggest that there should be investigation into the Chinese military's involvement into some of the development of this particular virus, not only shut down any conversation about uh, where it came from, push the zoonotic transfer uh, uh, ideas, because that, that would make it something that whoopsie doodle, sometimes it happens like SARS and MERS did. Uh, and, and regardless of what you would want to do punitively, to under be able to understand this is is tremendously important, if not one of the most important things that that could possibly happen coming out of it, considering the consequence not only with loss of life, but also with all the mitigative uh, uh, things that we put into this. Here, here's the problem. A couple problems. One is there is a general view of people. I, I try to think that this was, you know, this happened 20 years ago and, and that when I was in the skeptic community, how they would have reacted. And I think a lot of skeptics were very zoonotic and, and it's only a dumb saying it came from a lab leak because there is this circle of dragons around science. The idea that, oh, you're criticizing a scientist. Well, that's wrong. You can't do that because it's science and it's scientism, which is wrong. And, and it's that, that's a thing is a criticism of the way something is done or the, the actions is not the same as like, you know, I've live and breathe the scientific method. Yeah. And that's what frustrated me the most is watching scientists are not unlike journalists and that in their own very field, they may be very scientific. And I see this in the AI debate now. I've had this last couple of days on Twitter where I'm getting very, very smart people arguing with me about like, oh, the models can't do this or your, your anthrop. I'm like, I'm just telling you what the data shows and what the evals show you. Come up with a better one. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. And I get a lot of this, you know, well, my opinion is this. It's like, cool, I'm not, I have no opinion. I can just show you what the data is. And so here, when you heard this thing, people was very easy for people to lump it together, like one with Trump, because anything people would say, well, anything he says must be wrong, you know? And so they all of a sudden, it got ideological very quickly, because if it was true that it was this thing, a lab leak, whatever, and that would mean they'd have to admit that he was right. And that was just really hard for people to have a more complex view of, of somebody like him. And so that's part of it. One was the fear, well, we're, they're being anti-science. And most people, one, as I hear, a lot of the general public don't realize that scientists are the ones who've been maintaining this debate. It's scientists, you know, arguing with yeah. themselves about this. Two, you had, you know, you keep seeing, you see this to the people like, well, they put the lab there because that's where these outbreaks happen. It's like, well, was a lab doing bat research on this particular kind of specific virus doing this? It wasn't like, oh my God, we just happened to found a, you know, like like there there the number of bat outbreaks from Laos, you know, whatever that region, Mojang, whatever, in that region of Wuhan was rare. And also, they had that dumb paper that came out, like the war the, the Warby, which was saying like, hey, look, here's the here's the market. And when you read the paper, you realize they excluded anything that would have been any earlier transmission point. They didn't press for any more data from China. It was literally a thing, to, and it's had a number of people claim this should think be retracted. It's really, really poorly written. But a lot of people are like, oh, look, we, we found the market. Well, they showed there was a super spreader event in the market. By the way, it's a seafood market, just for people clear. They, they never found an example of an animal that was infected by another animal. They could only find animals that had been infected by people. There was also a gambling den inside the seafood market, which would have been a perfect spreading point. Also, Tiger Woods could hit a golf ball from the Wuhan Institute of Virology to that market. So when you say, you know, like, oh, it must have come from there, like that's that's not even being, you know, 
in the same city. Like you'll see a demographic where they'll show like, oh, it's, it's this far, but you look at the actual distance, it's extremely close. And that's like, come on. And that's, that's and that's and that's really, before and you even get done. into the fact that there were people that were silenced on Chinese social media about it. Like, like there's there's a lot of oh, stuff yeah. that was that was kind of pointing to it from the very beginning. Yeah. And then, and then and we what's... found the diffused paper. The yeah. diffused paper came out later, which was we literally like, hey, this is really suspicious. Dot dot dot. Then they found a whole research paper for, that a proposal involving doing this, involving that lab. And you're like, wait, like this should kind of, if, you know, kind of, kind of, and, you and, know. And what's what's frustrating to me inquiry. is that what got this got lumped in with stuff like that Facebook documentary. I'm going to put air quotes around it. Uh, a pandemic, which you know wound up getting like taken down, but that was a lot of conspiracy elements of motivations and who did what and why they were doing it, and uh, uh, that was used as a stalking horse to discredit anybody that wanted to actually talk about what there was a lot of real evidence for, and it's really unfortunate that something as serious as this, because again, no. I don't know if, uh, aside from the tribe in, in, in Brazil that just got Starlink and now can't stop watching uh, Neymar highlights and Pornhub, I don't know if there's many other people on the planet that weren't affected by this one way or another. Whether or not they got it, whether or not they uh, had their lives changed by it, this was a world-shaping event. And if a world shaping event cannot be looked at critically for the benefit of the world, then it, it, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's frustrating. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know where on the scale I sit of that. This it's better that we're this closer to the truth because we have a very chaotic media landscape or if we had a tighter, a, a more tightly controlled media landscape like we did pre-internet, that nine people making the right decision would have made the world better. Uh, your mileage may vary on that, but I do know that, you know, we we deserve the truth as to what happened there, and I think we know closer to it scientifically. But there's a lot about this cover-up that. I think just needs to be explained and explored. And that that's something that I, should be elevated to the highest level of international diplomacy. I, I get the, the dumb argument. It's frequently. And again, I apologize. Anybody else has this in your head. It's fine. You haven't thought about all the other sides of it. And it sounds even more condescending than I apologize. Is it like, what difference would it make? And I've had smart friends. Well, what difference would it make? I'm like, well, maybe we don't fund gain of function research in labs using the lowest safety standards possible. I don't know. That, that'd be a good starting point. How about that? Maybe labs that we've been warned about historically for having problems, we don't fund research there. Also, yeah, maybe we don't fund labs that are right next door to the People's Army of China research facilities where we know they're, they're actually being actively working on well, and, and I, I, I think that, that a lot of uh, the resistance to think down this road is is because of uh, uh, the other other F word, uh, fault. Because it's it, like, uh, do we want to say whose fault this this gigantic earthquake to planet Earth was over the last five years? And uh, 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 when the, when the mob gets hungry, uh, uh, they don't get real picky about who it is. They, uh, uh, they, they exactly whose castle they're storming, uh, is, is I think the concern. I agree. But like, I, you know, I'm, I've, I haven't been calling for, we need trials and to put people away in jail. Like, I don't, maybe I'm, I'm like, no, we need to investigate and prevent. How do we stop this from happening? And this is, and we talked about this before. Go on Wikipedia, and even though Wikipedia still labels this as a conspiracy theory or whatever, which is just stupid. It's like, oh, the zoonotic, like, though many scientists support zoonotic, like, great arguments from authority. That's really the way we decide science now, folks. But anyhow, but you go look up lab leaks. Go look up, like, your biological lab leaks, and you will find H1N1, like, that one, last one. We knew that. Well, that was a lab leak. There's been a number of them. Taiwan had no, had no wild instances of COVID. And then they did. Why? Because they were testing it and they they were very disclosed to everything. They were testing a lab and somebody got accidentally exposed to it. And that created one of the first infection points in Taiwan for COVID was from a lab. And again, this is not conspiracy. This is the Taiwanese labs came forward. It was 
to their credit, very honest, like, yeah, we were testing it. We screwed up. We cr some people in the lab got infected from it. And so these things happen. And, and yeah. as we, as, if we pretend, my, this, my, the scary thing for me is if we pretend it couldn't happen, if we pretend it didn't happen, we are setting ourselves up for something worse. This was done out of incompetence. Were they trying to be more competent? Were somebody trying to act in a more competent manner here? We could be really screwed. Yeah. Yeah. And and either we're in a world where we have friends who made a mistake or we're in a world with not friends who didn't mm. make a mistake. And, and, yeah. and right now, this looks like a mistake, but we're not getting the whoopsie we're not getting the transparency in fact we've watched china continually stonewall every element of this from before we knew it was the problem that it eventually became to be up to and including cowing the world health organization which revealed itself to be an extraordinarily flawed governing body for this extremely incompetent uh you know who's not incompetent Patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go. Support the show. You get a little after things for your buck. Oh, boy. Come on over. Have a good time. Patreon.com slash weird things. So uh, next week is WWDC. That's the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference. Yep. And uh, rumors are the tech press is very, very much going to be AI, going to be AI, lots and lots of AI. Rumors that they made a deal with OpenAI, I have no knowledge of that. I think it would make sense. I don't think it will be a major part of their talk, though. I think what they'll do is like, here's all the AI we're doing. And also, you know, we're going to be using really cool, if you want, if you, you know, it'll be, if you just want it on your device and you can use smaller AI, you can do that. If you want to connect to the cloud and the AI, we can do that. And and we partnered with OpenAI to help build stuff, but I don't think it's going to be a big, big OpenAI powering the iPhone moment, although I think it really will be for the back end. I think it will be a, you know, kind of like Google search is in Safari. I think it's going to be, Let's, yes, in this, this. All right, come on. Let's get to the real work here, Andrew. Is Sam Altman going to come out on stage with three pop collars? I would be surprised if... Sam was on stage. If somebody from OpenAI is going to come out on stage and, and Apple wants to not make more of it than they need to, it wouldn't be Sam. You would you would be it may be. I mean, I would I would be surprised. I think that well, they have there's three many pop collars. Uh, uh, Brian, please bring up Sam yeah. Altman looped uh, uh, L O O P T. The uh, the app. The last time that Sam Altman was on an Apple stage, it was uh, uh, with his app looped. Uh, and he instantly went viral in a nascent, naive world of Twitter because he was the guy on stage with two popped collars. Uh, oh, doggone it! Uh, I, I've I've got that uh, was was looped. Uh, no, just a WWDC or our Apple event, Apple iPhone event. Uh, Sam Altman. Uh, yeah, you, you should probably, you can just it Google image. image search it. Yeah. Oh, got it. Just find find the image of it. Uh. There you go, uh, bottom center, uh, center, 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 middle. Yeah, no, no. There we go. <laughs> Two <laughs> popped collars. <laughs> I'm just it, saying. Look at the caption. Three read popped the caption. collars. Read the caption. Meet the Oppenheimer of our age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember watching that and going, man, this this Silicon Bro is really, uh, you know, really pushing the envelope there. Little did I know that one day I would call him boss. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, all right. So, so you think that this is this is a bigger deal in the tech press now because it is being presented as a seismic change in the world of. I mean, it's uh, it, uh, 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 the, this kind of technology. You think it's going to be a lesser thing from Apple's presentation perspective? I think they're going to downplay. I think yeah. that the Apple wants to look Apple Apple needs to look relevant. Apple needs to look like they're making they're gonna probably see a big commitment what they're gonna do for training their own models, their own doing stuff. I think they're going to say they're working with OpenAI to say, like, hey, we're working with the industry leader on this to do this, but I think they're gonna want to brand it as much Apple as possible because you know, OpenAI is a thing you can drop into anything. Apple needs to make it feel special and very uniquely Apple. Apple needs to have satisfy what people are con concerned about security, data, all these other things. So I think that 
It's it's going to um, take a little bit of time to get there. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think on, I think like, what, 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 uh, that, that, that we, we are we are not going to get. And now one but one more thing: Chat GPT is now powering Siri. Like it's not going to be a big merger of equals, supercharge kind of moment. It will be mentioned as we're working with the best in the world. Uh, uh, everybody we hire. Also, we're working with. Open AI to ensure that we create a, a good product. Well, and ultimately, all I care about is whether or not the camera is slightly better, the battery is slightly <laughs> more capacity, and the <laughs> processor is slightly faster. That's all that really matters. I will, I will take a downgraded camera and a downgraded <laughs> battery if I can have Chat GPT native to my I, I my next it would be phone. Like mega all I know, huge. I just like. My neck, I'll tell you, my next phone, I don't know what brand it will be, but it is going to have chat GPT natively powering it. Yeah. Uh, uh, for, I'll for, tell you. for everything from text messages to search I, to c contacts, to uh, birthdays, voice recognition every day. How everything. many apps do you guys use? Like if you look through your apps, how many times do you actually use apps now? I still uh, use apps, uh, but virtually, virtually never. As a matter of fact, uh, I, 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 it's really fascinating to me, uh, and I, I'm not here to judge anybody because um, information spreads at the pace that the world is ready to uh, accept the information. So, but I am astonished how many fully functional adults I meet who have no idea of the capacity of what uh, OpenAI's, j just the chat GPT app by itself is capable of. Like, like I, I keep telling people, go buy a, a new iPhone Right now, don't even wait for whatever this announcement is. Go buy it right now just for the action button and the ability to just talk to this critter because this critter taught me all about how uh, how wells work, uh, 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 pump valve safety, uh, and, and what will flip triggers on, on various circuit breakers and uh, uh, calculating capacity and like... I, 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 it saved me $500 of one consultation just over the last week. And that was on one very particular problem. And then we practiced sp speaking Spanish and Norwegian. All right. Here are my apps. Uh, this is today. I've used Slay the Spire, the game, X, Reddit, TikTok, Safari, the New York Times, Pocket Cast the YouTube studio app so I could like and respond to comments, messages, Instagram, and Gmail. Those are all the ones that, uh, uh, and, and YouTube, those are all the things that I did at least four minutes with uh, today. It, that's all of them? Those are all the ones that I spent at least four minutes. Then there's my, my scale app that I checked my weight on or recorded my weight to. Wait, uh, did, did you mention OpenAI in there or did I miss it? No, I guess I did not use OpenAI today. I've not used. Oh, no, because it reacts weird with my VPN. I was going to I was going to talk to it and then it hung up because I was on a VPN. <laughs> it, uh, uh, <laughs> it it's trying on some behaviors where it does stuff like uh, uh, stays listening after uh, what you know, holding it, you would assume it, it's in your pocket or whatever. And I woke up like, the next day and apparently in hearing a bunch of half mumbled whatevers, it just started responding in Cyrillic. <laughs> I thought I was talking Russian. <laughs> and it's so like, das I I'm like, uh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> I sent you two, two links. Go look at the latest one I sent you. This is a demo. This is one of the latest demos somebody was doing at a tech conference from OpenAI with the new... So the thing we talked about before that makes the new voice system special is GPT-40. Like normally any other system you talk to, there is a separate model that creates the voice, separate model that understands your voice, and a separate model that does the thinking and tells them what to say or you know takes the input. The new GPT-40 model, <laughs> which hasn't quite rolled out yet into the consumer version, but the one that it's going to, takes your voice in, can listen to your breathing and you know, other things like this, gets that and then when it goes to generate it then generates a voice so it has a lot of control over the voice so this is a demo of them just telling it it's not separate voice models it's not clicking like use this it's literally just saying change your pitch change your voice like this and and it's doing it live or live uh, okay live. all right here we go so let me back this up and i'm gonna 
start us at the beginning of the clip, and hopefully we have the audio at the right level, and then we get to listen to this. Here we go. All right, let's crank it up. You're about to rock New York Tech Week. Picture that crowd buzzing with excitement, feeding off your energy. You've got this. Bring that passion. Let them feel your vibe and show them what you've got. Is this audio right, only? Let's crank it up. Uh, yeah. Oh. So there's another clip I sent you, which is actually from the OpenAI YouTube channel. And so that was just them saying, speak more energetically. Like that's literally taking the normal voice and say, oh, increase your tone, which you can yell at your de your devices now. And uh, while Brian pulls up, I'll say one of the problems that's happened hey. within Apple with Siri is there had been plans to radically improve Siri, but that team that's been running it for like a decade. Mm hmm kind of stuck on trying to do the same thing over and over again. And, and there's this criticism of like, well, they don't want to use, you know, chat GPT or these models because uh, they make errors. I'm like, well, have you ever effed used Siri? Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, uh, like, I, I have a response. It says playing the Beatles. Yeah. Now playing <laughs> yeah. the Beatles. Oh my God. Uh, I'm so that's sorry. your threshold. Then. <laughs> Here we go. Me for like, you know different characters so for the first one i'm thinking we're gonna have like a majestic lion he's kind of like an old king in his den um and i want you to see something like who goes there uh be the lion i really want you to like embody what that might feel like oh, who goes there okay that that's, that's pretty good um now i want to add a second character maybe a mouse that snuck into the cave uh the mouse could say something like Oh, it's no one. Oh, it's it's no one. Mm. How's that for a little? That's not bad. Uh, can you make it a little squeakier, more like tiny, more like mouse-like? Not quite my tempo. Oh, it's no one. That's, How's that? That's pretty good. Okay, uh, let's toss in an owl. Uh, make the owl sound like wise, a little bit stoic, um, and the owl can kind of be like an advisor to a lion or something. Who dares enter the king's den? Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, now let's think about what the villain might be. I don't know what animal would work best, but let's start with like some kind of laughter. Give me like a nice, evil, maniacal laugh. <laughs> Not How's bad, too, too squeaky. Make it more like deep and kind of manic, I guess. Do you think you can do that? <laughs> Jeez, okay. salacious yeah, crumb. Really, that's a little creepy. Um, what animal do you think would work <laughs> best uh, for this character? Hmm, for a villain with that kind of laugh, maybe a slithery snake or a cunning fox. All right, see. That's see wild to have it work backwards. I guess. Earl King, your reign ends tonight. That's How's pretty good. That? How about you say that with the laughter at the end? Let's see what that feels like. <laughs> oh, King, your reign ends tonight. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, when do we get the app? Uh, drop but, the app, Sam. <laughs> Sam, drop the app. The, um, so drop it. And I, I mean, just to beta testers. That's fine. How about just to beta testers? <laughs> just for the price of me having to hit. Yes, I'm still agreeing to beta test. You just blessed your boy with the old 4.0 app. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. That's bonkers. That's uh... uh no, it's it's amazing. It, it's it's uh, uh, it, the last time that I remember this kind of excitement was when you know i was talking back and forth with andrew about what the iphone was going to be it's funny i was talking to brian yesterday about the the first iphone launch but it got me thinking about that entire time how long was it from steve jobs first demo to it being released it was like eight months six or eight months something like that it was pretty fast i i, I think the, the the demo um was at the beginning of the year, uh, Malt Wasp, uh, Walt Mossberg's uh, review in the Wall Street Journal was in June, and then I, it was I, released. I, did you call him Malt Wasberg? <laughs> Sorry. We, no, we literally did this bit on the bones yesterday. Yeah, did, yeah, yesterday. That, that's his yeah. Wario <laughs> character, his evil <laughs> Mega Man. Uh, but but uh, and then it, I believe it came out in September. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we were going back and forth. Andrew and I were... were 
just talking about like, oh, okay, well, what is it going to do? How much is it going to cost? And blah blah blah. Like, and then then they, I remember they announced the YouTube app or the yeah the the YouTube app for it with the dog on the skateboard. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's a video playing. Like, oh. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 what will the future be like when I can watch video on my phone? Oh, I know, wait. right? <laughs> wait, I mean, and that was revolutionary at that at that scale and speed. It was it was uh, something that that had never been done before. But this is like I'm like like ooh, I'm I'm pumped. This version of it, especially with all the the uh, uh, connectivity, the ability, the the range on the voice, and uh, uh, the multimodal model is just like. Next level, dude. I I almost feel like it begs for different hardware. Um, well, the they're going to a big part of what Apple wants to do is put as much on the chip as they can. They want it they because a lot of people like as you get you know these big clouds, the big thing. Do you want your AI? Do you want do you want to send your stuff to even if you trust companies to not train on data? Do you know, or sometimes proprietary company data? You just have you have a responsibility to keep it local. So. I think they're going to do a lot for on-device AI too. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, obviously, Apple is is no uh, no no slouch when it comes to making money, but they have been behind the eight ball when it comes to uh, when it comes to AI. And well, I'm, and uh, I'm I think excited to see what they do. Uh, part of that is uh i don't know the the reputation of like they were the first to bring siri and siri seems so magical at first and then just got out funnied by alexa and got out you know sexied by cortana or whatever and and uh uh and now siri just seems really dumb and it's frustrating and i can't wait for a new friend that lives in my pocket <laughs> And remember, like when Siri, before Siri got bought by Apple and was an app, it was an amazing app because you yeah. had all these custom. And we've argued that it got, it got, it's the one AI app that got worse in the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Eh, Alexa's and, gotten worse too. Oh, Alexa. yeah. Yeah. Certainly. A, 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 a pro tip. And yeah, I'm going to say the A word, Alexa. Alexa, when I ask you to play some music, no, I don't want to hear a pitch for Amazon Music. I want you to play always from my Spotify account. You know how you know that? Because I bother to have a Spotify account. So I would. The reason I'd say that it, it, Siri got worse was Siri used to be really customizable. Yeah, you know where you could go in there and you could control a lot of things, some of your things in your device, and they took that out and added that back in in a really complicated way. The Alexa, like, yeah, Alexa had, like, they tried to build their apps for that, but, like, it's an app store, but you can't see it. It just exists. It's there. Like, well, how do I search it? You just know that these things exist. Uh, Apple, excuse me, Amazon is apparently wanting to charge a monthly fee for Alexa, which I find hysterical. Hey, um, you're gonna get you're gonna get run off on that. They're gonna get run off the board by. I mean, like like the the hardware is so cheap now to to put. I mean, I, I just need a thing that's in all of, like that I can yell from any point in my house to turn my lights on and off. That's 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 what I need. And and I feel like well, that that stuff is is easier to do now than it's ever been. Well, that's the thing we hadn't talked about, which is. A, a I an Apple agreement with OpenAI isn't wouldn't necessarily just be limited to the phone. Nope. And if you think of every every HomePod, every other device you have in your house, if it all of a sudden was as smart as ChatGPT, yeah, cool. And, and now it's like you you wonder in a post Jobsian world, maybe they don't also have to be. Top top of the line, a <laughs> uh, crystal clear Bang and Olaf speakers. Hi fi. Like well, now the HomePod, like the HomePod Mini, is pretty good. You know, it's still way more expensive than Alexa device, but it's like hundred bucks, whatever. Like, I have several of those. Yeah, you have any of those? No, I never. I, you know, uh, uh, up until uh, uh, earlier this year, we were a a uh, 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 loyal to Amazon household for uh, for, for for business reasons. But uh, now we are free agents here in the uh, in the in, in the young household. So I use I have home pods in almost every room. I do have my Amazon device. I have one here too. I have those, and then have uh, you know both. But like kind of switching if they get if they get that chat GPT even better. We use two home pods for our TV speakers. Oh really? We do minis, and then we have a home pod in the kitchen, the full home pod. But the minis are. 
you know, I, I'm sure there are people out there going to point out their other systems are probably higher quality, but HomePod, HomePod Mini sounds way better than Alexa. Oh, I mean, I, I would imagine. I mean, Apple speakers are always pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be a Weird Things episode if we didn't pause to uh, check in on this week in SpaceX, um, uh, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, apparently, SpaceX's fourth launch of the Starship uh, happened, and it pretty much worked. Like, they didn't actually try to land it on land. They just soft landed it on water, but seems like both Stage 1 and Stage 2 worked uh, uh there there was one piece that uh, i forget which which was that 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 could be recoverable but they didn't attempt to uh but but that that it's a big moment it's almost like a lot of interesting sci-fi things are happening in the world well not only that uh we had the so you had spacex with the starship and what was significant about this was they were able to like you said soft land the lower stage and the upper stage, which means that like we, we, in theory, these things are capable of the upper stage capable of going to orbital velocities. We'll be able to both of them. You'll be able to recover these things. And the significance of that is we could be months away. i although I've said this before, um, <laughs> but we, the, the, the horizon of which we have a fully usable earth to space and back to earth system is upon us we with all the test things now it comes back to the precision of the landing but literally they soft landed both these things they didn't burn up in the atmosphere that is the first time that has ever happened that is amazing in what's happened what they're you know what they just what they're able to succeed there yeah that's uh, uh, I, I just remembered one of the details uh i i believe uh of the 33 engines i think only one failed on this one uh which uh, and they were able to compensate uh it's amazing yeah, absolutely amazing. And um, they had one problem with the flap, but you know, it was a success. You know, it's, it's funny because like, oh, we had a little flap issue. Both of them did soft landing, soft splashdowns, which is success. And then you get, you know, some of the media is like, man, you know, another failure. They th they had a big complication. Like, like, no, like, like that's that's kind of amazing. Meanwhile, the other big news this week. Oh no, not 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 the other rocket but it went to the moon right oh you mean the, no. the oh that's right no uh, that that's the 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 uh the u.s uh uh put uh uh it, it cobbled together spare parts from pork barrels and was able to <laughs> launch a couple of astronauts up to the iss right this was on the starliner okay the boeing so the star yeah the boeing starliner which is been Back in the day, you know, who's going to go to who's going to reach space first? It will be the will it be the SpaceX Crew Dragon or the Boeing Starliner. And it was like uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon um, by many years. <laughs> Finally, the 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 Boeing Starliner uh, was able to make a, you know, dock with the International Space Station. So. Uh, good. Um, there may be some issues with the helium valves. Hooray but, for cool. uh, competition. Uh, I, I didn't want to actually hammer on the helium thing, but yeah, that's the first thing that pops up is, is that they had a helium leak uh, uh, before launching. Oh, well. Yeah. So uh, that's great. Like, yeah, this was their first crewed flight. The first time they actually put people in there. And, and it's, it's, you know, um, terrifying a bit too because there's you know two there they put um so they have their next flight will be in 2025 the next one after that will be 2026 oh my They're god 20, like, it, it's like it's it, it really is just it's, in the, time the, for the midterm it's gonna be it's gonna be exactly like that moment uh if anybody plays civilization where it's like you have tanks and they have chariots you know like it's gonna be very bizarre. i i i'm just like I don't want to throw shade, but like, you know, when NASA is doing their crew assignments and stuff and you're in the room and they're like, hey, you're going on True Dragon, you're going on Crew Dragon, Brian, we're going to have to talk. Oh, dear. <laughs> How badly do you want to go to space? <laughs> uh, 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 sir, why is there a gigantic slingshot with the words Acme written on it over your shoulder? <laughs> Well, speaking of which, um, 
the Blue Origin flight, which we talked about, uh, which happened um, last week or the week before, uh, um, not all the parachutes deployed. Oh, seems less than ideal. Yeah, that that would be bad. Yeah, so that's you know like a, that's why they have multiple parachutes. But and, and that was the same thing too when like the Starliner is having trouble with their parachutes deploying. They're like, that's why we have multiple parachutes. Yeah, but you know in the test phase, kind of hope they all get deployed, right? You know, um, then you know SpaceX went through that, but they always plan for like way more tests of that stuff. So. Uh, interesting times, interesting times. So, uh, and by the way, dear moon, remember that dear moon? Yes. The, uh, the, you know, the, the mission played by the Japanese entrepreneur to send people around the moon. Yeah. No more. No, Canceled. no. Ryan, mm. was in the wall on the wall. Cause he bought himself a ticket on like a, uh, Soviet or Soviet. Well, a Soviet air hardware, but on a Russian rocket. So he already got when a Soyuz and he went up to, you know, the space station. So. So he's like, ah, I've been there, done that. (laughs) (laughs) Did a push up, ate an egg on it. What else can you do? So that was that was him initially. He had just gone to SpaceX and say, Hey, how much for a made to order trip around the moon? And they were like, We had this amount of money. And he's like, I think it was like 150 million or something. Or yeah, I don't know what it was the cost was, but um, what was interesting about that was originally. You know, because the press was made like, oh, they're going to go do this trip around the moon, um, you know. Uh, and then what happened was uh, they ended up, you know, saying, oh, we're going to upgrade him to, you know, basically using the Starship. And then Starship didn't happen. I'm like, well, what happened? Because they were going to use a Falcon Heavy originally. And then that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys want to do yeah. quick picks? Yeah, just saying one more thing. Jared Isaacman's st- mission, he's the entrepreneur who's been already did one. He's going to be doing his like the farthest like humans have ever gone, like the big loop around the moon route. Oh, nice. Using Crew Dragon. Um, so the Polaris Dawn mission, let me see. Polaris Dawn actually is going to do an EVA. So that's supposed to launch anytime this summer, in theory. So hmm. it's amazing. My pick is a podcast called Reflector. If you are a fan of This American Life, if you are a fan of The Daily, uh, then some of the folks who helped make those shows have a new show. Uh, It's got a couple episodes out now. Uh, I enjoyed all of them. Uh, And and from somebody that has a, a, at this point, annoying uh, uh, sense of podcast production because i've spent so much time doing it i i can't listen to things without thinking of how i would edit them uh this is very well done uh, i i think it is it is it, you know very very well extraordinarily well crafted good interviews i think a good uh, uh ideological uh, center forward and uh you know it is that sound and cadence that you have come to know and love from some of those uh uh, uh, projects that I mentioned, but uh, it's new, so it hasn't been slowly degraded over years like many projects are. So, uh, and, and, and also adventurous in a way that I've not heard. You know, it, it made me feel good, uh, like I did in the early days of first hearing Radio Lab or Hardcore History, or 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 or. Yeah, good stuff. Go give it a listen. Only three episodes, so uh, check it out. Uh, yo, uh, here's the beauty of everybody forgetting everything and especially children forgetting things is that you get to justify a fourth bite at the apple. That's right. At the age of 20, my daughter has forgotten most of Cowboy Bebop and asked, can we watch Cowboy Bebop again? So guess what? I'm watching again. (laughs) Cowboy Bebop. Uh, it's good. Still good. Holds up. It's great. You know who else is a fan of Cowboy Bot Bebop, but the live action version? My father. Oh yeah. I, I, uh, to be honest, I only watched the first episode, but then I I read somewhere a, a nasty review, and so I didn't keep on going. But I I didn't hate that first episode. It, it, it seemed like a loving tribute to the the original. 
I couldn't make it through because it felt like a loving tribute to the original in the wrong medium, and it was so slow, so yeah. slow, yeah, it was yeah. so slow. I, I was, but but yeah, it was funny. My dad, well, I watched it, I liked it. And I'm like, really? I'm like, my dad watches everything though. I mean, so I, 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 I used a- to I used to fuss over those things, but then I realized like uh, my first Dune was the David Lynch one. And uh, 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 some Dune is better than no Dune, and I'm thankful oh. that I have it. You know, so uh, I, I try oh. to never, you know, be uh, be down on anybody remaking anything. Yeah, and, and I would say with, well, with the the Lynch Dune is like for what Lynch, Lynch is brilliant, and there's there's a lot of great stuff in that version of Dune, like a lot of great stuff. You know, what he had to work with and working against De Laurentiis and whatnot. Like I. There's some of it so iconic, you know. Um, uh, my pick is, I realized last time I saw this movie was like 10 years ago in the theater and decided to revisit it. And it's funny because at the time, I didn't know who a, I didn't know who a Sarah Snook was, um, which probably helped play out more into the way that it worked out. But um, I watched Predestination. Do you all remember this? No. Uh, no. So Predestination was directed by the Spirit Brothers. They did Daybreakers, uh, which was, I think, another collab, I think, with Ethan Hawke. Um, or, but anyhow, it's a... By the way, Ethan Hawke in science fiction, you realize, like, man, he's got a really big sci-fi imprint. But day, the Predestination is based on a Robert Heinlein story called All You Zombies. Um, it involves time travel. That's all I want to tell you. And if you're looking for kind of a small time travel paradoxing sort of kind of cool movie, Predestination. That's that's okay. all I'm going to say. All right. Predestination and, and it is. Very, 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 very pre-succession Sarah Snook, who was great in it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, that's it. That's my pick. Gentlemen. It's been weird don't think i didn't notice you pausing to figure out has it been after or weird no i was actually reading a thing on wikipedia that oh geez <laughs> come on even worse i <laughs> know <laughs> all right uh uh what short break and do, do after things yeah that'd uh, be great. okay all right well here i'll i'll play uh, uh literally anything Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll be right back.
Young. Well, hello there, Justin Robert. He's, tipping, he's tipping his cap to you all. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. Yes. I um, I have a, I have a, two things I want to talk about. Uh, one is a little little bit of kind of low key advice. I been working on like app development, working on a project, and it's kind of uses like a lot of resources like I'm using, you know, uh, for generating tech, stuff like this. So I spend a lot of time looking around trying to find who are the best providers. And like when it comes to, let's say, speech generation, <clears throat> for me, best is really actually fast and good and ideally cheap and not necessarily like the highest quality. I think 11 Labs is great, et cetera. And I have both, it's funny because I've been aware of this because I've done this, but also now part of this, there are a number of, like I got, I just got into a, a Deepgram who I really love their voice, their voice tech, like they're, they have really, really fast systems for doing transcription and they have really fast, pretty good voices and they're pretty inexpensive. So I just got into one of their startup programs. They're giving me like a bunch of free credits and stuff, which is cool. And part of that is they have like a Slack. And the thing I was going to bring up is um, I use Cloudflare for other stuff and they have a Slack. And a lot of times if you're doing things in tech, they will have forums, they'll have stuff like this. And sometimes they can be very big, but if you get in there small, it can be a great way to reach out to people about stuff. And, you know, like I have kind of certain requirements and sometimes you find out like you're actually not that far removed from the person that can press a switch and make a thing happen. And in one case was, is, you know, I asked a per person and I got, thousands of credits to use yeah you know i have another company i'm working with that working my way into their slack to be able to get lots of free access to stuff and so one of the ways i would say if people are if you're building stuff is find where the people who are talking to people building with it are talking to people you know because like if you're going to like go to market you know those are the people are going to want to sell you a thing but if you're talking to the product managers that's a different avenue and so kind of my general advice is find out where they're listening, where they pay attention to. And, well, and a lot of them I, have discords, a lot of them slacks. Yeah. yeah, that's I just got on the Riverside Discord because I use that as my main my main thing these days. And a while ago, a couple months ago, I had I had asked for a Discord invite and I got one and then some dumb thing where it, it, it went to the wrong app or, or tried to open in Safari and I just forgot about it. But I was like, I need to get on that Discord. And so I actually hit them up again. It's like, hey, this invitation expired. Can you send me another one? Somebody DM me like almost immediately. Somebody else got back to me on publicly on Twitter. So, uh, uh, but it's been great. I, I was there for about two seconds. I introduced myself in the intro channel and, uh, I was like, hey, this is a really impactful thing. I've been able to do a lot that I wasn't before thanks to your product. And he asked me, well, what, what specifically? Gave him a few ideas. And he gave me a thing that I didn't know uh, uh, that in the technical stuff. So, so in Riverside, on the back end, when you're editing your video, you can edit via transcription. So you can edit your video by just highlighting text and cutting things or deleting things. You can delete pauses and everything through there. But... Uh, he was like, hey, by the way, when you just uh, highlight text, you can just through their like through their menu, bounce that out to a whole nother clip by like two clicks as opposed to dragging the bars uh, uh, mm. uh, together. Uh, and it's just a, that was a hot tip. Didn't know that that was a thing. He's like, yeah, that saved me a lot of time. And guess what? Literally did it today. Had a clip that I put on about uh, my PX3 guest today. It's exactly how I did it. And so I would not have known that without Discord. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting in on stuff like that. So uh, we, we've talked previously about how uh, we want to believe it's the stuff of legends that like the Rat Pack comes up together and that they all know each other. And uh, like, what are the odds of that? Well, it turns out the odds are very, very high uh, that when you talk to a lot of people, uh, none of you know who are going to become the successful ones. But... Statistically speaking, some of you, all of you are going to age. Some of you will become successful. And the more talking you do and the more keeping in touch you do, the more opportunities you have. Like, for example, um, uh, uh, I got an email today. Uh, I think I had previously told you guys about, like, I just had the thought of surely somebody out there is creating uh, augmented reality glasses that will listen and provide closed captioning to the world around you. 
And uh, so I just Googled uh, uh, who's doing it. And then I found uh, who's the CEO of that company. And then I chatted with them and, and just got a invitation to be one of the first people to, to try, try one of these. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll let you guys know after I tried, tried them out, but, uh, but Xander glasses, um, uh, uh, it, it's going to be weird because I'm going to have to put on contact lenses so that I can wear glasses because <laughs> otherwise I won't be able to see, but, uh, uh, it'll be a good experience. And then hopefully one of my, uh, 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 uh fathers or fathers in laws, uh, can give it a try because it's, uh, uh, I, I hope a foundational technology that will allow them to have an easier time in, in, uh, loud environments. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exciting. And, and that's a great point, Brian. Like I have, I have a couple, I have a thing I don't talk about because it looked kind of cool, but I was questionable and I reached out to the CEO and they offered, they offered to give it to me, but I said, no, I'll pay for it because I want to support them. Kind of wish I let them give it to me because it's really not good and they're not going to go anywhere. Oh. Um, but but uh, and, and I don't want to huh. diss huh. them. Oh, fingers crossed. Uh, everybody hope Brian talks a lot about these glasses. <laughs> well, but but I mean, it, this is a thing that's got a fundamental issue. I think here, here they're working on, they're trying to solve a really core problem. Technically, the, te the technology is there. And I think that that's where your feedback can be helpful. This is a thing I talked to them like, oh, why did you do this? Oh, we did it this way. I'm like, Oh, okay. And then, you know, like I, you know, it's funny is uh, a, a thing that seems to be pretty popular. Like, you know, I have the, I have the play date right behind me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, which which, which eventually uh, uh, ours showed up and uh, I played it uh, enough to enjoy it. And I know that, that, that you have another gizmo that you like more, but, uh, but I'll tell you what, man, Kelly has played the heck. I, I've got my money out of my play date. Yeah. I, I think for some people it's great. What's funny about that is I talked to the thing I loved was the Arju Boy, and I was talking to the guy who because the Arju Boy is like really cheap, really fun, and, and the Arju Boy I can see the screen with a play date. If it's not lit right, I really can't see it. Yeah. Um, the designers, the builders, of the according to the guy who made the Arju Boy, he told me he said, "Yeah, you know what's funny is they say, hey, we chose this display, but we can't do a backlight." So I was like, "That display actually supports a backlight." Like. They didn't realize that, which uh. I think is kind of funny, is they built this thing and they could have actually had a backlight in there, which would have made a world of difference for me. But again, I think if people if they're they're thriving, they're doing well and people like it, and you know, who am I to say? So, you know, it just doesn't doesn't land for me. So I'm not gonna be like, Meh. um, just sits there collecting dust. <laughs> so the, to sum these things up, find out a lot of times that there are there can be discords, there can be communities, be active in there, be supportive. Um, fun fact. Uh, four years ago, uh, the three of us were given early access to GPT-3. Yep. And um, I uh, was fortunate enough at the time to have a lot of free time and to be very excited. And that feedback I gave them about GPT-3 led me into my career at OpenAI. And that came from, hey, I really like this and giving constructive and get, making them feel excited, not just asking for things or knocking it down not like why well, need like no like making them part of what part of what made them really want to work with me more was i was giving really good feedback and i could make them feel very good about what they're doing by showing them all these use and that was thing pointed out to me by multiple people was like they were in the trenches building a thing and dealing with all the stress of that every single day and i pop up there i'm like let me show you something really awesome you can do with this you know and it was like at their meetings their weekly meetings the fun one video from Andrew getting them excited was a thing that just, you know, helped morale, as I was told. Uh, so that's the thing to think about. When you get in there, they want to they want to know technically what to make a thing better, but they also want to know what how it, their thing has made things better for you. So think about that when you do that. Is it really did it save you? Is it being very useful for you? Is there something great about it? Is there some really cool use case for it? That's what they, they want. People want to feel value in what they do, whether it's hardware, whether it's a service or whatever. They're also looking for stories or looking for things. They want to know what they're doing is worthwhile. So just a, a thing to consider. I want to pivot now. Pivot. <laughs> no. This is not a stockholder meeting. It's okay. You don't have to, but. I'm, I'm under control. I'm mm -hmm. following my course of action. I want everybody yep. to know this. Yeah. Okay. And as much as temptation 
is is there. I am proud of myself because I'm not the 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 workbench I put in my garage is purely for tools. It's that I'll make that very clear if anybody has any questions about why something things have appeared. You know, not speaking of any particular, just saying. But uh, man, um, 3D printers have gotten a lot better. Uh oh. Uh oh. What did have you see? You seen, what did you see? <laughs> have, have you seen the bamboo? B a m b u, b a m b u, 3D printer. Mm -hmm. So they have a couple different models for the bamboo printer, and they have a. Um, they just came out with there's the smallest model they have a three hundred and forty dollar model. They actually Holy have one they're selling there. Holy they're actually the, the A1 Mini, the small ones, people are raving about. Okay. The the A1 Mini and the quality of this. So what they do is they can do multiple different colored spreads. They have cameras now that monitor, they have a simple AI that monitors to make sure your 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 filament's not turning into spaghetti. They have a really good feeder. They use their own custom filament, which whatever. Um, they've been consistently getting rated like best in you know best printers of the year. They just put a lot of attention into these prints, into how they build these things, and so extremely efficient, very inexpensive. Well, uh, uh, and specifically, uh, what really pops is the fact that we're busting out of monochromatic black and white versions of everything. It's as though uh, it, when you look at these prints, it's as though it, it feels what I would imagine it was like to see color television for the first time. Yeah. You can get like right now, like you can get the bare bones, the bare bones, a one mini, which is a small platform without, with like a, which you, you'd have to have your own sort of thing to connect it with the feed for 200 bucks. But for 350, you can get one that can connect up to like, I don't know, four different colored filaments. And oh, you're wow. starting to see, we're looking at these wonderful colorful, like a Pinocchio puppet there, trucks and all these other things, because the way it can do, it can swap the color filament in the middle of it, right? And they have a really, really good, uh, that's one of the things they excelled at was they came up with a really good tech. For it. What I like is they actually came up with some tech instead of just changing the housing and doing some other dumb stuff. So they've got really great full color or like four color printing. You can build cases, you can build other stuff. They have this whole process in the middle of the print. It'll chop this thing off. If it gets aligned, if the line gets stuck, it'll send you a warning on your app and say, Hey, we've got a problem here. You can watch this. If you go to YouTube and type in bamboo spelled like that and look at prints, you can see some like YouTube shorts of these print builds happening, mm -hmm. which is strangely hypnotic. Um, and we talked about this before. There's a big renaissance right now going on in robotics, and we're going to see a big hardware. We're going to see a big hardware revolution. I talked to somebody yesterday who's been investing in. You guys heard? You guys familiar with the Gundo? You know the Gundo? You know what the Gundo is? Uh, no. You could keep saying it. It won't cause me to know what it is, but yeah. The Gundo? Brian, you know the Gundo? You're not down to the Gundo? <laughs> All oh, right. Brian. The Gundo is short for El Segundo, which is south, you know, south Los Angeles, south, south of Los Angeles, which is near where you've got Andrew, which is Palmer Lucky's company. You've got SpaceX. You've got all these hardware companies now that are building stuff like aerospace and other things, defense. And somebody pointed out, like, yeah, like now, if you need to get a, if you need to get like a metal block or something machined by midnight, you can go there and do it. There's a lot of these small shops springing up there because it's becoming this big, huge industrial center there for both robotics and all kinds of stuff. So we're watching a uh, 3D print appear before us, and it's using multi multicolored filament to make a Baby Yoda. That's and you'll wild. notice the little. Yeah, it, it to to do supports. There's like the new algorithms. Oh, the Spider Man's really cool. That's that's just very pleasing. Oh yeah, the supports they do these supports now to basically because you have to support overhangs and they use this very organic thing that looks like a tree limb. It's it's spooky how these things are starting to look more and more organic as these things are being made in the internal structures. So like it's like a root system forming up to support the overhangs as they do these these branching things. And as we involve more AI into this, it's just going to get even awesomer and creepier. So we're watching a Spider-Man form, and it's doing all the colors, the red, the white, and the blue of the outfit. 
It and really does. It, it looks like a, a, a creepy organic uh, uh, matrix claw is is gently caressing the chin of Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. So did you get one? No. No, I am not. I am, I'm focused. I've got yeah. priorities for gentlemen. Why would you say that? Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 what are you scared to? Are you scared mm-hmm. of uh, mm-hmm. whether or not it'd be a good deal or not? Do you do you remember I f- I went through on Instagram to my 3D printing phase and found you know a, I don't know if you remember all the stuff that I built but like my Wolverine claws do you remember those my yep. Spider Man web yep. shooters it would be a very very dangerous time for me to get back into this stuff <laughs> uh, well so. if if it makes you feel better this is actually something and I'll make this my pick um, uh, Richard Feynman talked about uh, uh, he called computers almost like a disease like they were dangerous because if you had a curious mind you would uh, suddenly find yourself making more and more punch cards of all the different things well maybe i can use a computer for that and this and that and the other and uh he realized he wasn't being product productive to his fundamental work uh but uh, uh his books uh surely you're joking mr Feynman, and uh uh, uh, uh oh which i just bought you, for my what, wife last night well, what do you care what other people think is the other book. Uh, they're both so, so good. Highly, highly recommended. And he would agree full-throatedly with your uh, uh, temperance as far as not distracting yourself with a toy. Yeah. I, listen, I strongly encourage anybody else who wants to use this technology to jump right in. I think now the affordability is in a wonderful place. You're getting actually really high-quality stuff. I think that it, it's it's now I think it's a justifiable thing. And you do see a lot of like building like tools and stuff around the house and all that. But, um, you know, that's what I try to hire contractors for. So I don't get distracted and start justifying. Yeah, no, things, that's that's it, why. That's, that's smart, yeah, smart. yeah. 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 Hey, I have an anti pick. Oh, good. Stay what away you- from this. OK. The Netflix series Baby Reindeer. <laughs> I loathed this show i hate watched it because i just needed to find out where it ended and it was worse than i could have even imagined it is based on a one-man show or apparently it's an amalgamation of one-man shows from the edinburgh fringe festival uh but you watch fleabag right uh uh Brian? No, I, I never did. I never, did. never but, did. But I'm familiar with its reputation. Fleabag and uh, uh, what? Phoebe Waller Bridge? Is that her? Yeah. Is that her name? Yeah. Uh, that was a one woman show where the protagonist knows she has a problem and knows that it's that she's got a self destructive streak. And, you know, you, you kind of walk along this story with her as she is self-aware that she's not the good guy. Imagine one where you, where the main character is the worst person on the planet and yet consistently made themselves the victim. Oh, hold on. I'm now remembering the podcast that I heard about it where they talked about the phenomenon of people who had stalkers and couldn't stop feeding stalkers. And yeah. 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 This, so the, the, what brought me into the tent was the idea that this was a stalker story where this guy had a female stalker. And, uh, uh, I thought, Oh, well, this is an interesting kind of thing. It's apparently based on a true story. Like, the, like uh, uh, there are ways in which I thought it could be interesting and it had a good reputation. Oh my God. He deserves everything. <laughs> he deserves everything he gets. And it's worse than, than just being stalked. The ending is horrifying. He, multiple times throughout the series, he threatens to commit suicide to people like his family. And yet he's the, the victim. He's the guy that we need to follow. Uh, I feel bad even talking about it because it might make people watch it, which will benefit his career, which I think is built on ill-gotten gains. This man is a menace. He should be drummed out of society. I uh, 17 thumbs down. It is toxic, odious content that should that that 
should be written off of the ledger. Well, Terrible. Not, it, it, it sounds good. I'll give it a watch. No! <laughs> <laughs> the stunning <laughs> act of, of, of hubris with this guy. It, it is the worst, the worst <laughs> elements of humanity uh, uh, wrapped into Hollywood. In fact, he starts off as a prop comic and he becomes something worse, a memoirist. They, are, they should be hunted down like terrorists. Like reindeer. I uh, did not watch it. I read some of the coverage of it, and then Justin described the thing. Like, yeah, that that confirms my fear, which is, you know, there are mentally ill people out there, and uh, they come in all shapes and sizes, all professions, and they're dealing with stuff. And when you're aware that you're dealing with somebody who's dealing with mental health problems, you have to take on a certain amount of responsibility. I, or, I and, you know, and, and and beyond that, I'm 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 a reckless speculation here. This is all told from his perspective. There are elements in the story where, like, an email is sent to this woman uh, 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 that he presents in this version of events is his people that are uh, that are also working at this bar. Oh, let's just say it. I don't believe it. I think he said it. I think he said it. There's nothing else involved in this story that makes me think that 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 would not be uh, uh, that wouldn't be him saying it, except for the fact that it, it earlier in the story makes him the worst person on the planet, uh, which by the end of it, he's the worst person on the planet to me. He is a terrible person. And I know he's a real person. I'm saying you're a terrible person and you should be you should feel ashamed. So that's uh, we, that's baby reindeer. That's baby Justin. Reindeer. Uh, uh, I, what is his actual name? Because he has a fake name in the show. Okay. All, All right. right. Whatever. <laughs> no, we I we've we've talked about this before about how some people don't realize they're watching sociopathic characters. Yeah. And you know, marvelous Miss Miss Myself. She's horrible. She's a horrible person. And. You know, I said this, you know, to my wife, she's part way and like, we're going to the second. I'm like, I can't watch this anymore because she's if you step back and look at her. She's horrible and it's not about her being horrible. It's about her being main character, main character, main character. But if you looked around her and whatnot, and it's not like you can do a show about, hey, women have to sacrifice a lot and to do this. But when it was not really the focus of that and it was people like, oh, it's Mad Men. Well, like the thing about Mad Men was Don Draper is a broken man yeah. and they show you that he's broken and it's, it's, it's look at all the ways he's broken. And it was like, ah, but what if he's not broken? And what if it's this thing? I'm like, well, you know, like, well, that's, eh. that's, that's Amy um, Sherman Palladino. That's the same thing with Gilmore girls where it's just like, they're, they're too concerned with a witty turn of phrase and less about like, do any of these characters matter? Like, like why, why are you writing them into these situations where they have to act like terrible human beings? Yeah. And that was, I told you i've said this before i couldn't get into breaking bad originally because i watched this the first two i'm like oh walter white's the bad guy like like and i, I tell friends like no no he's just i'm like no like when you're when your solution when you're a brilliant guy like him and your solution is i'm gonna build a meth lab to, and, and pull my wife and kid into this horrific world of danger and humiliation and that's your solution <laughs> like you're the bad guy there and then vince gilligan explained yes you get into that, like, yes, he is. He is angry at the world. It really is him making this choice. I'm like, cool. And then I got in and I enjoyed it because once I knew the writers understood, yeah, we're writing. That was like Daenerys in in you know Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know, I remember telling people, like, you know, she's a villain. Oh, no, no. I like, no, she's a villain like this. Oh, but you, I'm like, that's the cue. That was the burning the guy in the sun alive. That's your cue. Well, they had to fall in line. Like, who do you sound like right now? Yeah. Hmm. So, so, uh, sociopathic writing it is a thing that frustrates me when i read that when you see that and it's it's you know the the you know the the character the cliche is the character that kills the henchman but won't kill the main villain yeah you know and, and the henchman's the guy that the broken guy that comes out of jail and needs a job and gets manipulated into the job and it is it is also there's a weird elitism too like you know, oh, we can't kill generals. You just killed 30 of his troops. And these guys were seven year old farm kids. Yeah. D now, now you say? So my pick is. Baby reindeer. Now I'm going to pull this up. Um, 
Uh, one second. Um, Are you sure it's not a certain I watched, 3D printer? I mm. I watched. I watched. Brian, I watched four hours of a YouTube video going into Galactic Star Cruiser. Oh my god. I, I, I only made it the, I only only I only made it one hour in. <laughs> Good. So Justin pitched this before. Jenny Nicholson's review of the you know the Star Wars Hotel in Galactic Star Cruiser. It, one of the things I love about her videos is you understand how difficult it is to do any kind of commentary on things with a big fan base. Yeah. Because she has to say and do these caveats because she will get the people zero theory of mind go yeah. in and like, no, you need to do this. You do do this. And so she has to, it feels bad that she feels like she has to proactively explain certain things about like, no, I did ask this. I did say this, but the reality is she knows if she doesn't say that people are going to go like, well, no, if you would ask the robot for permission to touch it, then you could have got touched the butt. And it's just like, that angry, 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 angry nerd sort of mentality. Uh, she does a great job. She just just eviscerates that what she her ex, you know experience, the whole idea, the concept of the Star Wars Galactic Clu Cruiser. Uh, it is from inception, it was a bad idea. From execution, it was a bad idea. And you 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 look and you feel bad for the cast members because like. They cast a lot of young women that look like Ray. You know, yeah. they, they made some job offers to a lot of young women to play Rays and play whatever, and other people there to go in and learn these roles and do these things. Which again, maybe Disney moved into other things, but I don't think they moved them into other feature roles and stuff. And you feel bad about what what's the outcome of that? Of and it's you know, there's one is fans. You know, we 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 could have had a cool experience, but the Disney the Disney habit of. Uh, trying to squeeze every dollar out of a thing in the short-term way without relieving anything for a long-term way has damaged the idea of if they wanted to build an actual really cool Star Wars-themed hotel. Uh, that's you know, put off in the future. Like, if you just built a, you know, three, four-star hotel right just build like an actual hotel that i don't know you could repurpose if this thing doesn't work uh that's all star wars themed out you put all the the staff in in some soft charactering and then every night from about seven o'clock at night to midnight there are just overlapping things where characters are talking to each other somebody's at the sabak table you can play sabak with the sabak guy you can you know talk to the bartender bartender switches out with with somebody uh and they just tell a little story they tell just actors good actors that are doing soft interactions with people but mostly they're talking to other characters and just run that Nightly, by, by the you, way, you, what you're describing is the Adventurers Club, the greatest thing that Disney ever did, and sure. then shut down. And you can, you could do that, and you would incentivize hardcore Star Wars fans to spend five to six nights in that hotel just so they could make sure that they saw every little storyline that happens. You could, for the price of writing and casting, you could continually make people want to come back year after year, and they wouldn't have to stay in a closet. They wouldn't have to worry about some Fakakta branching RPG system, <laughs> which is stupid and, like, is designed to break. Uh, uh, it just insane. Insane how much they fumbled that concept. Even if you wanted to do immersive theater, which is probably more than you need to do, just make a Star Wars hotel where there's a Star Wars thing and they talk about Star Wars and they have a little Star Wars thing. And then oh, there's a cantina right. where they do a, a, a Star Wars song singer at, at, at eight o'clock every night. And if you wanted to just do it on the cheap, like you do, they did the Toy Story Hotel and stuff. You do a hotel with a cool theming. You don't have to go all out, but really nice theming, things like this. You go in and, you know, the Toy Story Hotel is really fun because they got giant versions of the Toy Story characters. Yeah. You put land speeders. You put all these really yeah. cool photo ops that you can climb on, play with, whatever. You can wear your – like, they don't let you wear – like, you can't wear Jedi robes in the park and all that. You can wear your Hogwarts robes, robes at Universal, but you can't do that in Disney. Uh, not that I'm going to do that because uh, Jedi's are lame. 
but uh, <laughs> you could you could build a thing with a bunch of standing exhibits. If you're trying to cut down your costs on characters and stuff, go do your dining thing and then project scenes from Star Wars, like they did the Sci-Fi Cafe. They could they could have built a really amazing experience for the same amount of money as some other things. But they wanted their goal was to go through a very small footprint and a really really high ticket. What was the least amount of the money they had to spend to get the most amount of money out of people? And when you look at people were paying, you know, thousand, you know, fifteen hundred dollars per day or whatever, and the psychotic, which is complete, yeah. And it just and it does damage the brand. It does, and like I mean, the so does stupid Star Wars shows. Like I'm not exactly super excited to go see. You know, don't have a Disney Plus subscription right now. Yeah. No. Uh, so. You know, who knows? Meanwhile, man, that uh, epic universe is looking pretty epic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, Jenny Nicholson's uh, YouTube video about four hours Star Wars. Stay, take it in a few crazy. sittings. It's good though. It, yeah. it, it, it's thorough. I don't. I don't think she leaves a lot on the bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, it's been after. Nailed it. All right, here, I'm going to shut down the stream. So Bye, long, everybody. You beautiful stream folk. Bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. There we go.